create a mega submenu, we simply add child menu items to a top level item. I'm going to add a few location menu items to the mega menu item. Dragging these items under the mega menu item will create a submenu for the mega menu item. Adding second level menu items will create menu column headers by default, laid out horizontally left to right. If we save this menu right now, we'll see the results. Then refreshing the front end. You'll see that each of these menu items creates a column header. Now those columns don't have any contents yet, and that's what we'll add next. Third level menu items will be organized vertically top to bottom below their parent menu items. I'm going to add a few menu items and to save time I'm not going to worry about matching them with their appropriate parents just so you can see the idea. Now I'll drag these items so that they become third level items and these will populate the columns. Now we'll save our new menu, and when we refresh the front end, you'll see that each column header now has three menu items below it. Out of the box, each column will be sized naturally and expand to the width of its longest menu item, so you can see each of these columns is actually a different size depending on its contents. This is known as a naturally sized column. To divide the submenu items evenly into columns, you can use Ubermenu's grid system to create your layout. You can use the submenu column default setting to set the default column width, which will be inherited by each item in the submenu. To do that, we open up the Ubermenu menu item settings for the parent item and click the submenu tab in order to configure our submenu. We leave the type set to automatic because by default that will become a mega, uh, mega submenu. And we'll scroll down to the submenu column default setting. Right now it's set to automatic, which means that, the, uh, that each column will be sized naturally. Instead, we can choose one of the grid column settings. So because we have five second level menu items, we'll divide this into fifths. That will create five even width columns. When we save our settings and refresh the front end, and we'll see that we now have five columns that are equally sized. And you'll see that the uh, because we have five columns, each of width, which take up 20% of the full menu width, our columns end up taking up 100% uh, of the submenu. The default column width can also be overridden on a, in the submenu on a per item basis. So for example, we could set the default submenu width to sixths, and then we could make our, make our first menu item, uh, first submenu item, excuse me. take up two sixths or one third by going to the layout tab and changing its column to thirds. Now when we refresh the front end you'll see that the first menu item takes up one third because we're overriding the default of one sixth for this submenu and each of the other columns takes up one sixth of the submenu. Now I'm going to reset these to the defaults for the next demonstration. We can also change the position of the submenu. For example, we can 
use our, a naturally sized submenu and center it below our menu item. Save our settings. And you'll see that the submenu is now only as wide as it needs to be in order to encapsulate our five columns. And again, each of these columns is back to a natural width as I reset those settings. We could also change the position to um, something like the left edge of the parent item. And when we change that, you'll see how it affects the position of the submenu and how it is now aligned to its parent. Now, if you want to use a non-full width submenu, meaning anything other than the full width option for the mega submenu position, uh, but still use the submenu grid columns, you'll need to set an, an explicit width for that submenu. That's because the grid columns work on a percentage base, so one-fifth means 20% of, of that submenu. And if you don't have an explicit width set, it's undefined what that 20% will be of. So in this case, let's say we want uh, this menu to be Six, the submenu to be 600 pixels wide and have the items evenly distributed into, into five columns. So we will set our submenu column default back to one fifth. And then we will set our submenu width setting to 600 pixels. Save those item settings. And now you'll see that our submenu is 600 pixels and each column is 20% of that width. You'll see that that forces columns which would normally be longer to wrap. So maybe we want this submenu to be a bit bigger. Let's change it to 800 pixels. And now each, each column fits more nicely, but we still have that even distribution to, of our columns. Also note that when we use the center submenu position, the submenu will still be bounded by, by the menu bar. So you'll see that this submenu isn't actually centered around, me around the mega menu parent item because then it would extend past the left extent of the menu bar and that would potentially uh, make part of it inaccessible if our window were smaller. If you would still like the submenu to be centered regardless of the menu bar width, you can go to the Uber menu settings panel go to position and layout scroll down to the submenus settings and change bound submenu to unbounded After we refresh our front end, you'll see that the submenu is now centered around the mega menu item and it is not it is no longer bounded by the menu bar. It will however be bounded by the next relatively or absolutely positioned item or element in the hierarchy, which means that if your theme wraps uber menu in a relatively positioned element then your submenu will be bounded by that element